Who the hell are these pasty point guards? Wait, wait a second. That's Tal Gumbrogdon. Pasty Pete Maravich. Wonderbred Van Vliet. OJ Mayo. Derek White. Logic, the rapper. They look Nicholas Middle to Upper Claxton to me. Out here balling in their Rajon condos. <laughs> Why I oughta Porter Jr. Newsflash, buddy. Healed. <laughs> Good morning, sweet world, and welcome to the No Dunks Podcast on the Athletic Network. It's Wednesday, March 13th, 2024. I'm Jay Skeets here in the Classic Factory, and alongside me, as always, Tass Mellis. Podcast listeners, this is for you. Next to him, it's the bearded one, a top shot hot boy, Trey Kirby. Hey yo, hey yo. And last but not least, over yonder, making the magic happen, super producer this week, Eshua Kid. How y'all doing? What's up, uh, Esh? Hello. Before we get into it, uh, Esh, I don't know if you can get a close-up of our guy, Trey Kirby's eye, but man. There it is. He got cut up, got a bit of a shiner last night playing pickup hoops, eh? What happened? You should see the other eye. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. It's nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. Took a thumb to the eye. You mm. can see a little nail slice if you want to get close. Um, I like to play in a crowd, you know? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> I like to attack a double team. You're I mean, Chet Holmgren right now. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I should have poofed up my hair for today's show. <laughs> All right, well, luckily it wasn't right in your eyeball. So That's it got right. you right in the corner. I might order a pair of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar goggles, though. <laughs> or should it. I say Kareem Abdul-Jabbar yeah. goggles? Go Robbie Avila mode. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm glad you're okay. Yep. Uh, later in today's show, we're going to hit the beach. A little beach stepping to answer some of your NBA and non-NBA questions, so that's later on. But we had some games last night. We'll start at the top of the West, where Anthony Edwards led a big comeback, and Kawhi got injured in the Wolves' 118-100 victory over the Clips. Big game from Ant-Man, Tess. Big game, especially after Kawhi left. The Clippers were rolling out yeah. of the first quarter, and then after the first quarter, Kawhi went to the locker room and you saw it on the TNT camera got got it in the that hallway there and then you saw him come out in street clothes yeah. and just went home and so thankfully we had those TNT cameras that really worked out you don't see a guy leave a game too often but he went home he had some back spasm problems I guess he wanted to lie down and didn't want to lie down in the locker room okay yeah you got to get horizontal if you got back problems but you got to it, that to me that's a concern for the Clippers uh, but that being said Ty Lue did say he's been bothered by it for a couple of days, and then he tried out uh, in shoot around. He seemed okay. He's fighting through it, so I guess that's not a problem. But standings wise, it could be a little problem if he takes a couple of days off. They've got the Pelicans in a couple of days, who are just right behind them, and if the Pelicans beat them, and it would only be a one game uh, deficit, they would have the tiebreaker over the Los Angeles Clippers. So it's really yeah, just one game. Either way, I don't want to get to tiebreakers too too early here in the season, but hopefully he does play soon for them. But you could just see things go off, and then Anthony Edwards, uh, another weird situation for him where he doesn't come out of the locker room at half. That's happened twice to him now yeah. where he misses the first couple minutes. What is going on? Stephanie Reddy on the broadcast clearly said has nothing to do with an injury. It's got something going on. <laughs> well, we know Trey Kirby's theory, and I think it's maybe true. The man's got to take a crap. Not an injury. <laughs> it was also not stretching. Yeah. Hey, man, in. when nature calls, nature calls. <laughs> at halftime. The, the previous one was before the game, right? Yes. That's right. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Very interesting stuff. A little stuff. different here. Uh, but, but, yeah, their, their depth showed out. Nikhil Alexander-Walker, awesome in this game, cool. along with him, uh, to close this game. But I just I just want to bring up Kawhi on one side and, and the Timberwolves' depth on their side because as Edwards talked about after the game, he, he was asked about all these guys showing up, all these guys coming through, like Nikhil Alexander-Walker. And he said, just like the old Warriors, strength in numbers. Everybody's got to step up. So they're getting that <laughs> mentality going sure. the last 20 games. And that's something that could be a problem for the Clippers, especially with the way Paul George is. Not balling, balling like Paul George. He's fine. He's doing okay. But the last 12 games or so, he's shooting 33% from the uh, three-point line. I just worry about the injuries with the Clippers, as we always do. Mm -hmm. This time of year, is it a problem? And Paul George has been a problem. And Kawhi, too. But I don't know. Kawhi, if he's fighting through it to play it, I guess it shouldn't be a problem. What do you think, TK? 
I think Anthony Edwards knows he's the best athlete on the court, especially against the Clippers. He's averaging 30 a game against them this season. There was the clip earlier this year when he's talking about Kawhi literally being old when he's standing next to him. We heard reports after the last uh, Minnesota win over the Clippers that they were like, these guys are all old. You know, <laughs> he knows he's the best athlete out there and he knows he has nothing to worry about with any of their centers, whether it be Zubats or Tice or Plumlee. They're not going to affect him at the rim. So he kind of cut out the three-pointers. He took seven overall, but only two came in the second half. He went seven for ten inside the arc in the second half, and he was just getting downhill the entire time. The team, uh, I think Edwards shot 62%. From the two-point range last night, the Timberwolves were 27-11 to 11 in fast break points. This is a team that just went 10 quarters without scoring a fast break point. In fact, the last time they played against the Clippers, zero fast break points. Yeah. It was obviously a point of emphasis for them to get out and run. They also forced 18 turnovers, which was huge, getting them some easy looks. And it might have just been a case of the shooting coming around. One for nine from three in the first quarter, 11 for 24 after that. The Timberwolves clearly seized the opportunity once Kawhi went out. Maybe the wind was taken out of the sails for the Clippers. Wow, excellent boat pun from me. (laughs) Completely on accident. Still freestyling here, but it just looked like the Timberwolves knew how to beat the Clippers, went out and did it in the second half. Yeah, the Wolves are 29th in the NBA in transition frequency, but they're tops in transition efficiency by way of cleaning the glass and uh, Dan Devine with the the assist there. And you've noticed they have pushed the pace a little bit more here, uh, often and effectively really without Towns on the floor. I thought Ant was a damn problem in transition last night. Um, He was also getting some nice bounces on some of his jumpers, hitting a lot of rim, a little backboard, but dropping. And man, how about him locking up Paul George on the perimeter there, I guess, what, late in the third quarter, and then Cookies picking his pocket, going the other way, and he finished the layup. That was that was impressive. I know that the, nice. the talk this week, or over the last couple of days, was the Anthony Edwards block, game-saving block against the Pacers. But, uh, you know, this was in the third quarter, not late fourth, but that was, that was impressive. He took on the challenge of Paul George. Mm-hmm. He stopped him a couple times where Paul George was trying to go to, and then poked it out, and they went the other way. Yeah, I can't wait to see him in the playoffs, because we have seen Anthony Edwards play awesome defensively in the playoffs and, and then i'm looking forward to that obviously he was feeling so good he was killing two boats when there was a double team <laughs> to keep the boats up it, double teams were coming at him it be, and he just decided i can beat you guys because i am the better athlete stopping paul george and he was getting those bounces that bounce in the third quarter when he hit that three-pointer and he's looking at the clippers fans there <laughs> just directly in the face like he was feeling great obviously Kill Alexander Walker, 28. Yeah, he hit five threes. Conley hit a bunch of threes, too. He had been in a bit of a shooting slump, so that was huge. And, yeah, you said it there. The Pelicans right on the heels of the Clips mm-hmm. here. Because we sort of, for the long time, talked about, like, top four looks sort of set in some particular order at the top of the West with your Thunder and your Nuggets and your Wolves and your Clips. But there are the Pels two games back. The Clippers have a back-to-back later this week. They play in Chicago on Thursday night and then they got to go and play in New Orleans yeah. uh, on the Friday there and we don't know the extent of Kawhi's injury and some mm-hmm. of these other guys so yeah it, it could get very very close there and you said the tiebreaker goes to, to the Pels as well yeah if they win they've already beat them twice so I hate talking tiebreakers this early however that would mean that they're 3-1 and one against the Clippers so yeah that is a big game for them huge huge uh, also an injury in this game Rudy Gobert in, injured his ribs there in the second half and he headed to the locker room he was in some obvious pain but uh you know, he's going to get a bit of a break here. I don't think they play. Well, he'll have his homecoming here. Uh, I think they play in Utah, the Wolves do, oh, on Saturday. I thought you meant Saturday. they play in a game in Paris. No, 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 no. no. They've already done that. <laughs> right. They've already played the one game in Paris this season. But, uh, you know, something to watch here. You get into this part of the season, all these matter, all these injuries in terms of playoff seating. And then if it's really, uh, you know, something that scares you, maybe like a back uh, acting up, then that can have an effect on your, obviously your playoff performance as well. But I love this tweet, final thought on Kawhi leaving because he wanted to just go home, maybe lie down. He had the discomfort of sitting on the bench. Miles Brown tweeted, Kawhi just left the bench, put his denim jacket on, and exited the arena. Will also be how he retires. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he will just get up so. one day, put on his jean jacket, and leave, and we'll never hear or see Kawhi again. It's probably how it will go. Uh, all right, well, sticking at the top of the West, uh, the Thunder, they lost to the Pacers last night. Miles Turner, 24. Good win from Indiana in OKC, 121 111. Your takeaway is TK. 
Pacers looked a lot faster, I thought, in this one. They were in transition all night long, 23-3 to in fast break points. And to me, maybe that means Tyrese Halliburton has kind of turned the corner on his injury. We know he had the hamstring injury. He was playing through a, a minutes restriction, trying to get to his uh, 65 games. Mm-hmm. And it looks like he's going to do it. And as we're seeing more and more players drop out, all NBA is looking pretty likely for yeah, Tyrese for Halliburton, sure. but I thought he looked incredible uh, in this game. 18 points, 12 assists, a couple of steals, a couple of blocks. That comes after a 20 and 8 game and a 23 and 13 game. He's stringing together uh, a nice run of games here as well. I thought Miles Turner. Pascal Siakam were dominant in this one. 72 points in the paint for the Pacers. And they did a really good job of attacking Chet Holmgren's body. Chet obviously got some of them back with blocks, and he's going to go after all of them. But the Pacers did a really good job of kind of playing bully ball with him. You could tell that the Thunder were missing Jalen Williams, having somebody out there with a little bit more bulk to handle Siakam. They just did not have an answer for the two of those guys inside. So I thought a really nice win for the Pacers. They needed it, and they just played really, really well. Yeah, J Dub obviously missed in this one. They yep. go with Gordon Hayward in the starting lineup, so it seemed like they would be big enough. This team that if there's any little hole in OKC, it's just they're not that large overall. And Chet Holmgren being their large guy, a younger guy, Miles Turner seems like he's comfortable going against young centers. That, that was a, a great performance from him. And Pascal Siakam at, at the four with the ball handling, looked great. Uh, so there was a little a size issues there, but you're right about the speed. This Pacers team just didn't stop for 48 mm-hmm. minutes. Yeah. And even when OKC came back in the third quarter and took a lead, the Pacers just didn't stop. They got pretty good defense against Shea. I know Shea got to 30. It took him 27 shots. I thought the the combination uh, of both their guards, uh, mostly Neesmith, I should say, a forward, uh, starting this game against him. And then Nemhard, there was a little Canadian drama there as, as <laughs> Nemhard tried to you know tried to stop him. And the foul calls that seemed to have been dwindling down, the foul calls on perimeter players where there's just a bump. Nemhard bumped him. There's a foul called. And... He went up to him after he said, you could see exactly what he said. That wasn't a foul. That wasn't a foul. Uh, you get a little Canadian drama. We'll see them uh, in Paris themselves, uh, I'm, I'm sure, uh, in a couple of months. But Shea got to 30, breaking the team record. Yeah, he stat padded at yeah, the end. Yeah, I think so, for <laughs> sure. It was sort of we- which is a little weird because you have like, there's like, it's not like a it's lot. the last game of the season. Yeah. He's going to get over 30 yeah. a couple more times here in the final, whatever, 15 plus games. But They were yeah. down 10. He fouled with 15 seconds yeah. left, got the ball yes. in after the free throws, and went coast to coast for a layup yes. to get him to 30. But I agree, pretty good defense from the Pacers all night long. Held him to 12 of 27. Field goals, you could say 11 for 26 if you want to <laughs> cut out that last one there. Five assists, four turnovers, though, for Shea Gilgis yeah. Alexander. And maybe that's going to be the recipe when it comes playoff time because I thought the Pacers did a good job of putting size on Shea Gilgis Alexander, whether it be Neesmith or sometimes Obi Toppin was getting him. Ben Shepard, I thought, did a pretty fair job Shep. as well. And then Nemhard was just giving the effort out there. Yep. Uh, and you said it, like, no J-Dub for OKC, which is huge. It was a close game at times in the fourth quarter. That guy, like, takes over games at times. So mm-hmm. missing him, I thought Lou Dort had a brutal fourth, too. I know he missed, like, three straight buckets, like, that should have probably, he should have, uh, you know, capitalized on there in the fourth quarter. He had the foul, which was definitely a foul uh, late, but uh, he just didn't play well down the stretch, I thought. And I'll, I want to give some credit to Rick Carlisle as well. I liked what he did. I, I You know, look, I don't watch every single Pacers game, but... I think he broke out sort of an earlier substitution pattern in this one. He subbed Siakam out halfway through that first quarter. He put Obi Toppin in there to play with the rest of the starters. And then that sub pattern allowed Siakam to really play with the second unit at the start of the second quarter. It was him with McConnell, Walker, Shepard, and Jalen Smith. And that makes sense because once Matherin went down, there's not a shot creator of that second unit. So to put Siakam there, who can obviously handle the ball, create things for others, I thought worked really well. Uh, and I think that was a little bit of a tweak there from Rick Carlisle. Smart move uh, that obviously paid off in the victory. Some sick highlights in this one, specifically for the Pacers. Aaron Neesmith had a great dunk on Shea Gilgis Alexander. Yeah. Obi Toppin caught an oop with his left hand. That just looked ridiculous. Kind of looked like Blake Griffin the way he was flying, but... 
Lefty Blake Griffin, and then there was like a double block on Isaiah Joe trying for a dunk. Yeah. And somehow Neesmith saved the ball with his foot on that one. <laughs> like he fell down, his leg went up, kicking scorpion style behind him, knocked it right in. I think so, the Pacers scored on the other end as well. Yeah, so we obviously uh, already showed you the West standings there, but it's OKC Denver just ahead of the Wolves, but Minnesota gaining a little bit there, half back from both those teams that are 45 and 20. Clippers three and a half, three and a half back overall, and Pels five and a half back. Uh, let's go to some of the other games. De'Aaron Fox scored 29. King snapped a 15-game skid against the Bucks with a dominant victory, 129-94. This was the Kings' first win over Milwaukee in over eight years. It had been a very long time whoa, <laughs> since they'd whoa. beaten this team, <laughs> but they never trailed. They led by double digits you know, midway through the second quarter and held on. Good games from Fox, good game from Sabonis. Just sort of kicked the snot out of them. That was a spanker. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't all that fun. And Milwaukee, uh, you got Doc Rivers putting uh, putting it some on him. You don't see that too often. <laughs> I wonder if J.J. Redick will note that today. <laughs> because Doc said, this one's on me. He said, we deserved it tonight. It's my fault. I didn't get them prepared the way I should mentally at shoot-around. Guys were talking about planes leaving as a staff. <laughs> so he kind of put it on him, and then he kind of blamed everybody else, sort of. Anyway, uh, he said, as a staff, we talked about it after shoot-around, that if our focus is not better than this morning, it's going to be a long day. And it was a long day. So that's on us. Yeah, I guess the, the Bucks wanted to get on a plane, Yeah. Uh, get back home chill out a little bit but uh yeah you know the last game of a four game uh, whatever it's an excuse i guess but they went one and three on this road trip not great no no, not no. Good. they shot 36 percent in this game they missed 32 of 39 three-pointers um and just really weren't in the game after like the first 10 minutes or so but uh really good stuff we had javel mcgee hitting a garbage time three uh, in this one, <laughs> Kings were on fire. How many threes do you think McGee has hit in his very long career? He's played a long time. Yeah, uh, nine. Okay. You want to go yeah. over or under nine? Uh, oh, ah, that's tough. I think that's <laughs> an line. accurate guess. That's a good line. I'll go over. I guess that's the right call. He's hit 15 three pointers in his career. He's 15 for 76 in the regular season and 0 for 6 in the playoffs. Yeah, I actually thought it wouldn't be that one in the postseason. I guess so. I guess so. I don't know how many of those were heaves in the postseason. I would imagine a lot of them were, at least at the end of a shot clock or something. But yeah, stepped into that one with confidence. That's a good. That's a highlight for Javale McGee. I enjoyed Rudy Gobert just to go way back against the the Timberwolves. First play where he shot that thing with his left hand off the glass, Mm. like he was trying to do something pretty a post move. That's the opposite of what Javale McGee did. (laughs) Javale McGee hit a shot. You saw Rudy. Weird, weird stuff. Low light in that one, if you want to check it out. <laughs> Sabonis, 22 points, 11 boards. He set the Kings' single-season record with his 47th consecutive double-double. Over the last 50 seasons, only two players have produced a longer double-double streak in a single season. Can you guys name the them? Last two they're, years. they're definitely like notable names. One guy still plays. Um, he was probably chubbier at the time he did it. Kevin, Kevin Love, Love, Kevin Love yeah. did 53 consecutive games That's in the, the 2010-11 season, and then this is a Hall of Famer, um, you know, uh, MVP. Charles Barkley? No, but play, oh, Charles Barkley, I believe, says he's his favorite teammate of all time. I think, or one of Kevin, them. No, no, Moses Malone. Moses there Malone. Yeah, exactly Moses right, Malone yeah. did it uh, 50 consecutive double doubles during the 78-79 season so there you go Sabonis. I would give Sabonis another double double for dunking on Brooke Lopez twice twice yeah both of them were pretty nice and almost instant replays of each other getting into his body throwing it down left handed but not the best dunk of the night in this game Andre Jackson Jr. oh my god <laughs> wow, almost he hit his soared. face on the rim yeah he was looking down into the rim when he went up there he for bounced off back. Justin Jackson maybe I think so I yeah. think that's who it was uh, Kevin Herter a Sacramento King stands up to celebrate. De'Aaron Fox is like, what are you doing, man? Hits him in the back of the head and then gave a worldwide Wobe shout out in the post-game press conference. I thought that was hilarious. But you know it's a big-time blowout when you're able to joke about somebody dunking on your team. That's exactly right. You're up huge. It's a huge dunk. A lot of the guys on the bench sort of like popped. The arena popped because yeah. it was like, whoa, that was a big dunk. That's, a, that's the play of the night right there. <laughs> but it's okay. We're kicking your ass. That's fine, I think. So that was the Jackson off Jackson, I guess. Uh, Andre. Yeah, I guess off so. Justin, if it yeah, was off Justin. He propelled <laughs> I off I think him. it was. It was one of those cool ones. It, yeah. it, it was like Mark Jackson getting dunked on by Tom Chambers. A little <laughs> yeah. bit. Yeah. You know, he put his knee on him a little bit and dunked on him. That was, that was cool. Uh, and Chris Middleton, he uh, obviously didn't play in this. He's missed 15 straight games for Milwaukee here 
with a, a sprained left ankle. He's only played like over like 1,100 minutes this season. Um, not a ton of Chris Middleton, but he is uh, practicing. He's getting closer to making a return. I, I make note of that because, you know, he's important to the Bucks, Hugely. To previous success, to success moving forward. He needs to play. He needs to, like, you know, pencil him in for the, the 15 to 20 points, whatever he can give you. We've seen him have huge playoff games. Chris Middleton, we talk about the roll, uh, not the roller coaster, the Ferris wheel mm-hmm. that he is, you know, where he uh, has these monster games and maybe a little quiet, but. You know, they need him back and in the rotation for the final couple weeks as they go to the postseason. Which Middleton do you think we see first, Kate or Chris? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Where is Kate? Wow. Man, if they should start, the, the Bucks uh, social team should start <laughs> releasing like photoshopped images of Chris Middleton. That would be very funny. Uh, talking about returns, OG's back. OG and Anobi returned to the Knicks. Josh Hart delivered another triple double. A monster triple double as the Knicks crushed the 76ers 106-79. Uh, what would you think of OG? Scored 14 points, uh, returning from an 18-game absence. TK, your thoughts? He took 11 shots and five threes, which I think is good when you're having issues with your elbows. You know, yeah. when they're removing a loose body, the first thing I want to see is can you still shoot the ball? Two for five from three. He was making effort plays out there, and of course, he finished a plus 28 <laughs> in 28 minutes because OG Ananobi is just a plus minus. Machine. I thought he looked fine, and I yeah. thought, you know, oh, yeah. Tibbs was obviously happy to have him back. It ended up being a blowout, but surely OG would have been happy to go 40-plus minutes. Yeah. I mean, he does, obviously, he sets the pace for New York's defense. He can, he is a shooting threat, so he spaces the floor for these other guys a little bit. I didn't think he looked rusty at all. No. And the Knicks are now 13-2 and two in games that OG plays. Uh, he is the ultimate glue guy for this team right now. But you had Brunson, DiVincenzo, they're hitting threes, and then Josh Hart was... He was everywhere, too. And they held the team to under 80 points for the third consecutive game. The Knicks have done this first time since 2000, 2001. That's wild. Under 80. That's impressive. That's very few points. So, did it twice here against the Knicks. Yeah. The the, the referees, they're just not calling those foul calls anymore, as we got to on yesterday's show. That helps a little bit. But, yeah, the Knicks are a machine uh, defensively as... You know, all these games that, that OG's missed, the team is 500 without him this season. They're 25 and 25 overall, now 13 and 2 with him. They look like a different team. Uh, they're just, they are a different team. They're now fourth uh, in the Eastern standings, and that's what they're going to be fighting for to just get a home court advantage. They've got two guys still waiting to come back, and Julius Randle, who Thibodeau said he remains in controlled contact situations. What the heck is a controlled contact situation? Well, he said light contact with the pads. You know, okay. that contact is what you would term controlled. Thanks, Tibbs. And uh, Mitchell I saw Robinson. he was playing uh, tennis. What? Yeah, Julius Randall put out an Instagram of himself playing tennis. You use your shoulders in tennis. That's good. Very good. <laughs> That's a good sign. Forehand smash is looking tight. Uh, but holding, control, the, baby. holding the 76ers under 80 points is not that impressive. <laughs> Tobias Harris, one for six last night. They also start Kyle Lowry and Mo Bamba right yeah. now. There's nobody who can score. Luckily, Max came back, yeah. and, you know, he had been off for a little bit, so he finished six of 14. Kelly Oubre is, like, their leading scorer right now. But we are in the midst of Josh Sanity. Josh Hart had zero triple mm. doubles the first six and a half seasons of his career. He's got four since January 30th. He plays with like great intention. I feel like you, he knows what he wants to do as soon as he catches the ball. He says, I just run around out there. And then when I catch the ball, I run around some more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he definitely does. Like you can see him when he's catching the ball on the wing, he's already diving to the hoop, yep. getting inside. And then that was a great moment when like his headband had kept getting knocked off. So he just tossed it off. The crowd goes wild, like a wrestler pulling down his singlet. <laughs> so to reveal his chest for the finishing move, he's been great. He's getting pretty high on the list of Tom Thibodeau guys. He called him Thomas Thibodeau. <laughs> <laughs> in the post game last night, Luol Deng is there. Jimmy Butler is obviously there. Taj Gibson is there. I would put Keith Bogans in the mix sure, as well. This sure. guy started 82 games as the worst player in the league <laughs> on the best team in the league. Didn't make sense. And then Joakim Noah is in the mix as well. So uh, he's a top sixer uh, for me in the Tibbs guys' rankings. And man, I mean, he is uh, skyrocketing up the uh, Knicks fans list as well. They love this guy and how he plays in New York, as they should. 20 points, 19 boards, 10 assists for Josh Hart last night. His fourth triple-double. I mean, most triple-doubles this season's like Sabonis, Jokic, Luka, Giannis. 
And then I think it's Josh Hart, uh, you know, <laughs> with much less than those, some of those other guys, but yeah. still pretty impressive. Still four. And as Trey said, six and a half years, zero. And then you get four in 42 days. That's pretty phenomenal. That's pretty fun. And uh, yeah, will we, will we see him play a ton of minutes in the postseason? That's that's the question always because his three's not falling all the time. Randall will come back. So Knicks fans may get a little a little testy about that. But uh, <laughs> it, it was good to see Tyrese Maxey back. And I don't want to go completely conspiracy theory, but he got hit on his head when he was back in Dallas, back in his hometown of Dallas, he hit uh, a player's leg. He went to the locker room because it's his hometown. His dad came to the locker room. Then he came back out and played. And the last four games, he's been out because of concussion protocol. Anyway, I just don't know what happened. I just want to know what happened. The, he should, probably should have just not played, but he was in his hometown, so maybe he just said, I'm playing. Four games out, but it is good to see him back, obviously. Other games last night, Trey Jemison. Scored a career-high 24 points to lead the Grizzlies past the Wizards, 109-97. Feel free to drop a who on that. Tasty. Uh, Sounds uh, yummy. Jemison? Uh, Jemison, but yeah. <laughs> Jemison is... Uh... <laughs> It's close enough. It's a but is bootleg it is booze? Jemison. <laughs> okay. Jemison. Uh, Van Vliet scored 21. Rockets held off the Spurs 103-101. And Tatum scored 38 as the Celtics used a 20-0 to run to get past the Jazz 123-107. Any thoughts on any of those games, remaining games? Nah. Not really. I just I, thought Jason Tatum looked pretty good. Yeah, he looked <laughs> you know, he was big. He looked like the biggest perimeter player out there, so he shot a ton of layups. It's like, I'm sorry, Chris Dunn, you're giving a great effort, but you're not 6'10". He he went through somebody. Was it him or George? Or like, I think he, it was Keontae oh George on a fast God. break. He just like, <laughs> shit him. See you later, buddy. Bye. Get out of here. Get yeah. out of my way. I'm going to score this. Uh, we had some news from the NBA yesterday. Orlando Magic coach Jamal Mosley has agreed to a four-year contract extension that'll take him through the 27-28 season. Mosley, who is just 45 years old, uh, has delivered the franchise's young core to a 37-28 and 28 record right now, fifth in the East. He's been pretty important, sort of a driving force to the to the roster's development over the last three years. Thoughts on uh, the Magic rewarding Mosley here? I just went through his uh, the, the old career of his. It's, it's interesting because... We all remember in 2021, he was the Mavericks assistant at that point. They hired Jason Kidd. People were upset. Why didn't? Why don't you just hire Jamal Mosley? He's, you know, if you want to be uh, critical of it, he's turned the Orlando Magic into an incredible defensive team. The Dallas Mavericks would love mm. to have that. But it is interesting because, as you said, he's 45. He played college. He was a Colorado Buffalo for a while, and then he had a short <laughs> career overseas. But he started on his coaching staff when he was – 27 years of yeah. age so so he's been around for a long time he started really really young but it took him a while to get a a head coaching job obviously the Orlando Magic are extremely pumped with him because you get a young coach you don't know if he's going to be great with both player development obviously that's happening and just to get have them play hard and that is yeah. obviously happening as well so Good for him. The Magic have increased their uh, victory total in each season here under Mosley. They started 22 and 60 improved to 34 and 48 and you know they're probably going to win you know 40 plus games uh, maybe even flirting with 45 the way they're playing here recently so the improvement is there not shocked at all that he is getting this contract extension no he deserves it like you mentioned the wins keep going up the magic have an identity they've been a top yeah. five defense they look like a great defense the next step will be getting some offense going and that happens whenever they're able to acquire a, a top-notch guard but i do think things get a lot harder uh, for Jamal Mosley starting next season. Right. This season's all good. Next year, expectations will finally set in. Paolo will be in year three. We saw he's an all-star this year. Maybe he makes Team USA over the summer. It's going to be tougher uh, starting next season for the Magic and for Jamal Mosley. One more positive possibly for Mosley uh, and them, the Magic, sort of signing him long-term here is he could be a free agent magnet moving forward because by all accounts, players love this guy around the league. Luca notoriously mm -hmm. love this guy. I think a lot of guys do. So maybe that helps recruit uh, a player or two, a star down the line, who knows, to pair with that young core there. Just something to watch. I mean, he's well-respected in this league. He's like you said, he's been on coaching staffs for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Cavs, the Nuggets, then he was under Rick Carlisle like, like for seven seasons there and obviously has his own opportunity here in Orlando. So good for him. And players love Orlando too. They, I'm just saying, something to watch. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're hitting the beach. Don't go anywhere. Selling a little? Yeah, cha-ching. 
or a lot? <laughs> Shopify helps you do your thing however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling savory sausages or offering ostentatious oddities, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. And you can sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. No matter how big you want to grow, Shopify gives you everything you need to take control and take your business to the next level. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the United States and Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's and Brooklinen and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash no dunks all lowercase. Go to Shopify dot com slash no dunks now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in shopify.com slash no dunks yeah a little love to the stream teamers joining us live here on youtube take a second hit the like button that little thumbs up helps us out in the algorithm they tell us does it who fucking knows nobody <laughs> knows when it comes to youtube but make sure you subscribe so you know when your boys are going live let's hit the beach baby you got the buzz Oh yeah, but look closely in the background, I see JD there on that beach in Mexico right now for a well-deserved vacation, but we got some questions that you guys sent in, you emailed them in. You dropped them on our YouTube page. You tweeted them in. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, let's get to the first one. Hey, guys, longtime listener from the Basketball Jones days. Bring back Will Boy. Will Boy. Will Boy. Uh, and a big fan of the No Dunks Empire and quality podcasts that dominate my life. Shen Goon and Sabonis have been cooking of late, but you can't help but compare them as poor man's versions of Jokic. So if Jokic is A tier, Sabonis is B tier, and Shen Goon is C tier, what are your other favorite tier comparisons in the league? And P.S. <laughs> if the young boys, the young men, I should say, can't handle a bit of heckling at the rink, they should stick to Tiddlywinks and PlayStation. <laughs> so thank you to Toby for uh, including one of our favorite drops of all time. Uh, that weird guy at the just hockey rink. P.S. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to say this. So Toby from the U.K., Talking about tiers, does anyone have a have a good one uh, within the league? I don't have a good one. <laughs> I, I have you some. have one. Right? I have okay. some, but they're definitely not strong. So, Trey, go ahead. Here's a tier for you. Okay. <laughs> all, all stars, all maybe all, all NBA players at some point in their career. Tier A, Steph Curry. Tier B, Dame Lillard. Tier C, Trey Young. Okay. Yeah. Kind of similar, right? Yeah, like sure. they're all high volume ball handlers with incredibly deep range, really good passers, but as you go level to level to level, you go from fringe all-star all NBA to locked in all-star all NBA to one of the five ten best players of all time. Yeah. Yeah. And the difference is that Steph Curry is Steph Curry when he has the ball and he's also Steph Curry when he doesn't have the ball cuz that's the thing that Lillard and Trey Young don't have is the movement shooting, flying around screens, relocating and getting open. Steph shoots like Ray Allen off of a screen and then he shoots like Steph when he has the ball. Yeah. It's a good one. It's a good one. I was definitely thinking Steph, I had Trey in the second tier. Um yeah, the Dame thing I was definitely thinking about as well. The, the the prospect for Trey would be awesome if he would play a little more like Steph. Um, that's what we'd be talking about. And and Dame is interesting too if he if he were to play that different way as well. Like the Steph way is the different way. In all honesty, you, guys like to play on the ball a heck of a lot more, and that's the the Trey life. That's the Dame life. That's for sure. Do you want to share one of your? Uh, oh, I got a bad one bad for one? sure. Because <laughs> um, I'm intrigued. Like well, I've got a, a guy who plays defense extremely well. 
all, all these tiers. They play D. Okay. They're incredible athletes, so they're going to get some monster dunks okay. and, and some good plays inside. And I say inside because they're not great three-point shooters. Aaron Gordon is my tier A of that type of guy who, okay. who we've – he's found the way over the extent of his career here. Jaime Jaquez is my B tier of that guy. You know, they are a little different, but we yeah. saw Jaquez. He can dunk it. He can do stuff like that. He can play D as well. Ochai Abaji is my – C tier. Uh, <laughs> what, that, that's what, what he is. Tier system. That's what it. he is. Okay. So Aaron Gordon to Hawkes Jr. to Abaji. Yeah. Different eras. Very different eras. Aaron Gordon is sort of old now uh, when you think about it. And obviously those two guys are yeah. very young. But Aaron Gordon, the, prospect, the, the idea was that he was going to be awesome shooting the three, being a number one guy. And then he's just found the perfect place for him. Obviously in Denver. Our guy uh, Jerome noting that, uh, and maybe we like crowdsource crowdsource this question to everybody. So if you have a good, you know, tier A, B, C, um, we could do something with uh, Pokemon here because this is sort mm. of like evolving players. We'd flip it on its head, right? It would be, you know, in your case, Trey Young evolving into Damian Lillard, evolving into Steph Curry. I don't know a ton about Pokemon, but I know they evolve. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed they do. Yeah. <laughs> Which I assume they just get better. Yeah, bigger, exactly, stronger. Exactly. I don't know. You win more battles. You okay. take down more trainers. Okay. Okay. So I think there's something there is the point. So way to get us started here. Toby, let's move to the next one. The Timberwolves lost Cat. The Sixers are still without Embiid, and the Bulls haven't had Lonzo Ball in over a year. <laughs> Two years. Two years, yeah. yeah. remember him? Yeah. He just got updates. I was shocked to hear Lonzo Ball updates this week. What? He's yeah. jogging. Okay. Okay. If you had to make a starting five with current players who are out due to major injuries... Who would be on your squad? That is from Will Brannon. Yeah, good question by way of YouTube. Uh, so, yeah, key word here, major injury. So I'm not going to include Steph Curry, who's coming back soon. Donovan Mitchell, who's coming back soon. You know, Porzingis. Like, like there are a lot of guys right now on the IR. But I hope we won't include Embiid okay. and Cat. I mean, no, they I'm be going to because like if, back this year. Yeah, but maybe not. First off, and they've mm. been significant injuries that kept him out for a long time. So I am going to include those okay. guys. So this is my starting five. In fact, I'll give you a whole second unit too. That's how many guys are injured. But I'm going to go Joel Embiid as my center on the all injured team. Elprin Shengun, a recent addition here yep. as my power forward. I'm going to go Scotty Barnes as my small forward. I'm going Zach Levine as my shooting guard. And John Morant is my point guard. <laughs> it's a pretty good five yep. right there. My second unit, not bad either, I think. Carl Anthony Towns will be the center. We'll go Julius Randle at the four. I'm going to slide Benedict Matherin up to the three. Trey Young will be my shooting guard. And then LaMelo Ball will be my point guard. <laughs> but you could also pick Lonzo Ball if you really want to. And that leaves still Mitchell Robinson, Robert Williams the third, Steven Adams, some guy by the name of Ben Simmons. Um, so... There are a lot of injured guys, unfortunately, but those there top are. ten there, I mean, and I'm probably honestly, I'm probably missing a name or two of with a significant injury. Um, so tell me in the chats right now. But man, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it was like I don't. I feel like we played two thirds of the season fairly healthy. Fairly, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's a good point. And then once, kind of like once Trey Young got hurt. That's when everybody started getting hurt is yeah. when uh, they started piling up. I guess Jaw is the big difference. Yeah. You know, he was suspended to start the year and then only the nine games before the shoulder. Yep. Crazy. Good question, though. Uh, next one. Hello, No Dunks and Tass. It's me, Jeremy Bippo. Bippo. I waved at Tass right before y'all went live in Lucas Oil at All-Star Saturday night, but I was too nervous to come over and say hi because y'all seem to be sound testing. He looked me in the eyes and waved back mid-sentence. I wonder what he was saying. Bippo. That's what I was saying. <laughs> okay, you were saying Bippo. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, my question. Do you all think this could be the year with the most teams ever expecting to win a first-round playoff series? I think it's fair to say each team with home court advantage in the current standings, they expect to advance. Also, the Heat and the Sixers in the East. The star power of the Mavs, Suns, Lakers, and Warriors in the West. That makes 14 teams and fails to mention the Pelicans, the Kings, and the Pacers. Only eight teams are going to move on. May the best teams win, says Jeremy Bimble. But what do you think about his point here? I think there's some truth to this, that a lot of these teams borderline expect to win a first-round playoff series. It would be a disappointment if they don't. Absolutely. Fair? Yeah, I, I went back and looked at the previous 70 seasons of the NBA. Jeez. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Good. This must be true. 
Because I think you have to include the Pacers, the Pelicans, and the Kings. The Pelicans and the Kings have both made the playoffs, so they don't want to get back to it and lose in the first round again. As for the Pacers, you know, they've been in the play-in tournament. They've been close to making the playoffs, but it's been a while since they've won. But they've been locked into a pretty high seed for the entirety of the time. So I think those all are included. I guess right now Orlando is just happy to be there. Like if you're talking about teams, Orlando's just happy to make it back. They just extended their coach. They're going to win, you know, over 50% of their games for the first time in a long time. Philadelphia, I think, is a question mark right now until Embiid comes back. But if he's on the court, they're expecting to win their first round series. And then all of the teams in the play-in in in the Western Conference absolutely expect to. Crazy. I think Bibbo's got a fact here. I, I didn't go through the first 70 seasons of the NBA, but it f- sure feels that way, especially in the Western Conference. The Minnesota Timberwolves have been bounced in the first round the last two seasons. They need a win, as good as they are, I, with everything coming together mm-hmm. and being this good, this roster being that good, they need to win. Okay, see, I, I guess you can make an excuse because it is their first time as assembled but, but that would be a terribly disappointing yeah. season if yeah. they get bounced in a first round Absolutely. against a, a Lakers or a Warriors or something like that. It yeah. would be. Yeah. But as people brings up brings up that the Lakers and the Warriors they expect to win. Yeah. And, you know they're not there to just have fun. <laughs> uh, the Lakers were there as a conference finalist last year, and the Warriors won the freaking thing. So yeah, it's a great point. There's lots, lots of teams to battle. Jeremy Bippo, one of the best names out there right now. Big Bips. <laughs> Good stuff. Good email. Not his real name, though. Don't <gasps> like that. Don't like that. I like Bippo. I like my man as a Bippo. Why did I think just that was your his name. real name? Uh, wow. Because we've said Jeremy Bippo for so long. Oh, that just shook me to my core. Yeah. <laughs> not even going to reveal his real name. Jeez. I like him as a Bippo. His real name, his real last name is Skeets. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> all right next one we all like talking about highlights and the best plays but i also love a good low light what's your favorite worst play slash low light of all time and why that's from varium hoot on twitter man there's there's honestly too many to pick from when you're talking worst play low lights i got a few here that i'll chuck out at you we just talked about Otto porter jr retiring i rewatched the clip of you know his controller getting unplugged and him absolutely zoned out on defense and just stuck and not moving. I had forgotten it's like the end of the game. It's like a three-point game. Yeah, it's a three-point game with like a minute to go and he just is completely lost. His guy leaves and he just stuck there. So that one is very funny. Uh, Nick Young, convinced he had hit the three-pointer, turning around, hands out, and then he like quickly turns around and it bounces out. Very funny to me, especially because it's Nick Young, Swaggy P himself. Uh... Take your pick of Kendrick Perkins lowlights. He's got a lot of good ones. Do you remember the one where he he got a pass from Westbrook and he like he wanted to be like a little slick with it, so he flipped the ball behind him and it went right to Kobe on the other team. Like right to him. <laughs> and Kobe just goes the other way. That's a funny one. He's got some other good ones. And then Brandon Knight, who is in a lot of like infamous highlights, highlights yeah. where he got dunked on by DeAndre Jordan and, mm-hmm. and died right on the spot. Uh Kyrie Irving, remember had him like flailing over once like he tripped and he fell over but then there's one I had forgotten about this one Brandon Knight botching a game winning fast break layup it was a tie game he got the ball in half and he screams the other way he's all alone like he's he's hurrying and the defense is trying to get back but he just he bricks it like an eight year old would brick a layup like 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 my team that happens from time to time all glass you're, you're just going too fast yeah and you just smash it off the glass that's a pretty pretty <laughs> funny low light. So that's I'll give that one a, a little love, but I'm sure you guys got some other ones. Oh, there's so many good ones. J.R. Smith dapping up Jason Terry in the corner while a play's happening. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Gerald Henderson whipping a pass cross court, <laughs> hitting an old lady in the face. <laughs> we showed that one on the starters so many times. Yeah, that's because they're blurred glasses. <laughs> <laughs> they go flying off, man. Uh, that was a great uh, ball to the face <laughs> moment. And then uh, a deep cut for me. It was my biggest vine ever. Kirk Heinrich drives baseline, gets cut off by J.J. Redick, does three spin moves, and on the last one, he just jumps up and just <laughs> he just passes it. There's nothing to do. First spin move goes nowhere. Second spin move goes nowhere. Third one, eh, whatever, turn Th- over. There's another good Bulls uh, low light uh, where 
all five guys are on the floor and they forget to have an inbounder. So they all run the play and they're all just running around, but the ref is just standing with the ball. <laughs> That's an underrated one. That's a great one. It's a really one. good one. Back in the Bulls days. You got any oh, other ones? Great ones. Yeah, there's some good ones on Vine. Vine was a low light. It was purchased by Twitter. Now it's dead. Oh, Bring it back. It might, it might be for sale. Ten, <laughs> ten cents probably. I don't know. Somebody, somebody six should cents. go get it. would be six cents. Like, classic stuff <laughs> those clips were six se- six seconds yeah, weren't they, they? i thought they were i think you're right yeah, yeah they were quick they were very quick yeah i thought I had, I had a flashback of tout Shaq's tout for a second but no <laughs> you're right yeah you're right it was six Whoa, seconds tout tout <laughs> hold on hold on for those that have no idea what you're talking about it's what a vine it's a <laughs> like know, a vine like a vine off. a vine social media but i think it was 15 seconds mm, he tried it Shaq was trying to make a social media right, essentially right right well that's a great it didn't, that's an old one man. Well, did you see what x is doing so are you becoming a video yeah, channel? Yeah, pivoting to video. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> it's, been, it's been happening for years. Not years, like four months. You just go on it. It's it's all videos. Yeah, yeah. And it's, yeah. A, it's a different place. It's a different time. Uh, the one that stands out to me is it's kind of a low light for Ben McLemore, but it was Kawhi and his mitts stealing it from him mm. on two straight possessions. Kawhi, those days where he would just he would just yank the ball from somebody. Scary. He just yanked it from Ben McLemore, went and scored. McLemore fouled him and won. Next possession. Next possession. He pokes it from Ben McLemore <laughs> again. McLemore fouls him again. That's a great low light for Ben McLemore, but just a highlight for Kawhi. Those were the times, man. Let us know your favorite uh, low lights, worst moments. Uh, there, there are a million. This is the NBA. Always coming through with those. Next question, though. Listening to last week's drop pod got me thinking about Markel Fultz's career compared to Ben Simmons. If you told me back in 2018 that Fultz would become a more productive player than Ben Simmons, I would have been shook. That's a good point. Uh, what other 2024 NBA or non-NBA fact would shock the 2018 version of you that's from at kevin underscore barlev trey you got anything for this one? Oh yeah a lot something big happened in 2020 i remember that <laughs> yeah. would have shocked me in 2018 <laughs> yeah that, something big happened <laughs> slipping my mind but yeah. nba wise uh i think i would have been shocked if you told me back in 2018 that by 2024 everyone is going to agree with you that jimmy butler is better than paul george mm. Mm. oh wow but wow. also guess what you like paul george now <laughs> that would have bl- because he has a podcast, mind. and now every NBA player has a podcast. All of that would have blown my mind. Okay, yeah, that's a great one. <laughs> I, I had written down that Paul George would have a good podcast, not just a <laughs> podcast, but it's very, very established. And then yeah. I got thinking about Paul George and who he got traded for, Shaquille Alexander, in 2018. That was his rookie season. He mm. scored 10 points per game, and obviously, he was going to be a much better than that. But I would be shocked. If you told me that he'd be a 30-point-per-game guy doing what he's doing way back then. That he might be the greatest Canadian basketball player when it's all yes. said and done. Yes. When it's all said and done. When it's all said and done. Point. When it's all said and done. Uh, those, are, those are great. That's a fun question. Everyone go nuts with that one there in the stream team. Here's another thing that's been making me feel really old lately that kind of factors into this. Because if you celebrate a three-pointer like this with your – index finger and your thumb making a circle and then a one two three pinky ring middle finger for yeah. the three that is the old way of doing it ah uh, yeah this is how everybody celebrates a three-pointer right now with the thumb index finger and middle finger and in 2018 the only guy doing that was dirk Nowitzki. yeah it was like a plot point of inglorious bastards i was just gonna say somebody did that yeah. but now everybody does it and I think D'Angelo Russell is a big reason why. Once he started doing ice in the veins, it was always with that. Mikhail Bridges obviously does like the Manny Machado sort of thing <laughs> right. as well. That has become the way to do it. And only us boomers do it the okay style. Mm. Yeah. I what mean, a change. I mean, when I say three, though, I even do that. Not when I hit a three, but when I oh, just yeah, say. Oh, yeah, when you're just, saying three. Yeah, I just do the, this alternate version. But, yeah, it's a good point. With everybody going uh, the Inglorious Bastards style. <laughs> yeah. That was like, that was like a, a major point of that movie. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you well, revealed yourself. It's a great scene. It's all sitting at the table, right? Oh, yeah. Damn, yeah, yeah, exactly. Just right. went out. Somebody's going to come lights down. Lights out. Yeah. Yeah. That, I just think of 
old school when you when we when we see it now there's like old ass guys who used to do it like vladi divots used to do it we're talking eastern europe yeah it's a European yeah. Move for sure that was a classic uh we got time for one more don't worry about the light ash yeah i wish jd was here cursing it though right now <laughs> that always makes me laugh uh what do you got here Tess? dear no donkey bunch it's award season and everyone is thanking their family and their acceptance speeches <laughs> Okay. Uh, is there anything you'd like to thank your family for? That's from Chief <laughs> well, in like to... Somerville, Massachusetts. Yeah, he always, always says where he is. Chief, he's still wearing those green hats, my guy. And he always sends postcards. He also tells you where he is. That's true. But, but sometimes he'll send a postcard. It ain't a postcard at all. It's, it's shaped like a postcard, and it's about a movie. Like, it's a movie ad. <laughs> yeah. He'll email. He'll mail those in. He just likes mailing things. Oh, yeah, he likes mailing things. And uh, talking about his family. For sure. Uh, well, first off, happy birthday to my dad. It's his birthday today. Oh, so this happy is well birthday. timed. Yeah, so nice. um, and I guess I'll stick with my parents here and obviously talking about my family. I would like to thank my family, specifically my mom, who came to a lot of the games, for being a chill parent when I was playing youth sports. Mm. Because, you know, being a coach these last couple of years, we're lucky. Our kids, we got a great group of parents. They're very chill. They let us coach. They, you know, they don't make a big deal out of things. But man, seeing some of these other parents on some other teams, it's not that serious, man. <laughs> I know Jamal Crawford was talking about, I guess, AAU hoops and and parents, mm. just like they just the pressure they put on these kids. It's not fun. It's the part that I don't get. I'm talking like five year old kids, six year old kids, seven year old kids, eight year old kids, like young kids that you're trying to get to fall in love with the sport. At least that's what I'm hoping is going to happen. I'm a basketball fan. I want more basketball fans. I'll tell you when you're not going to fall in love with sport, when you have, you know, <laughs> hundreds of adults <laughs> screaming at you, uh, you know, nonstop and putting way too much pressure on these kids. It's insane. So thanks to my mom specifically uh, for being chill about it. I don't remember her saying a damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was nice. You know, that it was good. Nice, yeah. Like Maybe back, like, it's like, you know, I didn't know that was that's what you should do um but people need to relax man your kid's not going pro i'm sorry <laughs> they're not and i know you're living through them that's the sad part because you sucked <laughs> all right that's just the honest truth but chill 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 especially uh, they, they just go nuts on these refs who get paid nothing maybe they're volunteers sometimes i don't know yeah. at least in ymca leagues and that they don't it's wild man your mom didn't say anything? What about to you? No, nothing. Well, she, I mean, she like, she would say good game and stuff, but like... Oh, okay. That's that's good then. It was At least never like, game. come on. Like, it never, ever. I mean, I was too busy kicking ass, so what was it to say? <laughs> but uh, no. no. Uh, you just... ever snap at her? I snapped at my mom once, and I still regret it to this day. Aww. She told me I was having a good game, and I was not. Oh. Hey, all it's that. Not. He still is. It still lives with you. Uh, totally, man. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, that's okay. a very. Uh, so, what do you guys want to thank your families for here, real quick? I got nothing to thank my family for. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I want to thank a guy who's not part of my family, but because he's Greek, Yorgos Lanthimos, the director of uh, latest movie, Emma Stone. Great speech. Oh, poor th things. Yeah. Thanking her. Uh, thanking Yorgos for poor things. I want to thank him for making poor things. I haven't watched it yet, but I'm going to, obviously. <laughs> Thanks, Yorgo. I appreciate I that. I think man. it's on one of the streaming platforms. Well, I'll find it. I'm pretty sure it's, it is. Nor watch it, it is, yeah. I'm going to consume it soon. Okay. Uh, what would you like to thank? Your I'd like to. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to thank my family at home for agreeing that watching basketball every night counts as work. Mm. Because we watch a lot of basketball. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes it can be hard to squeeze in a Shogun or a Survivor. Mm -hmm. Because we got to work by watching the sport we'd be watching anyways. I'd also like to thank them for actually being excited when I do show them well-curated highlights. I don't show them everything. Kay. But there are some things you're like, you got to see this. And they actually get excited about it. And finally, I'd like to thank my kids for mocking my Bulls updates. Every once in a while, they'll do an impersonation of me. and like, oh, I'm dead. Did you know the Bulls won? Oh, yes. <laughs> and I think it's hilarious. Please record that. I was like, oh, you got me. You got me good. <laughs> <That's> great. <laughs> All right, great question, Chief. Uh, Thanks, very Chief. weird question, but thank you for that. Uh, let's wrap up this podcast with uh, some Tweet of the Night fun. Mm, tweet of the Night. Wow. Tweet. Ah. More Greeks here. Thanasis Adetokounmpo <laughs> and his tweet. Actually, it's specifically about his podcast because he's got a podcast called Thanalysis. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got a 
a show coming up in the future. A couple of weeks from now, it's a live show. The first time they're doing a live show. Yanis is on it. And somebody else is coming on it. And then, what? yeah, I don't know. <laughs> live <laughs> finale is awesome. Yeah, in Milwaukee, I believe. Uh, but specifically, he tweeted this show coming out tomorrow where he interviews Jake Paul, who will be <laughs> okay. Who will be fighting Mike Tyson mm. soon. And so he calls this here on the tweet the interview of the century <laughs> man uh, it's it'll do well i'm sure um it's gonna get some numbers the century it's a good uh, graphic i'll give them that i can't wait uh for the analysis about the numbers i don't know if they're gonna share do you that, listen but, to this yeah. podcast occasionally do you okay yeah. no, no judgment. occasionally there's clips out it's 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 a clip shared oh, show yeah that's what a lot of these podcasts are they all are <laughs> in it for the clips <laughs> they do well of distributing those clips so i consume the clips okay. that's for that is absolutely for sure who do you who do you got in the fight <laughs> you got jake or mike i, I <laughs> you got mike tyson so or? mike tyson is 57 years old i hope he fights like he's 25 I, because <laughs> wow I, mean, I, okay. I don't think he's going to but I hope as well <laughs> no what do you mean he's not going to try that's what I mean by 25 oh, not, well. not necessarily be as it, good as when he's is this going to be a wrestling match is what you're getting out uh, here or yeah a little, oh, little oh, dinky and dumpers basically you could you could just you could, you could is it a real fight is Mike Tyson no. really going to fight like well so if it's no just, it's not well, okay then is, that aren't sucks. they uh, they're considering wearing headgear for this I saw Oh, okay. Yeah, they should. If, if well, it, well then, then I believe it'd be then it'd more be a real of a real fight, fight yeah. maybe, yeah, because... I just don't want to question Mike Tyson and say that this is just going to be something. He hasn't fought forever, so I guess you could say, yeah, he's just going out there to make some money, I Probably suppose. true. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yes. Jake Paul's going to win. Didn't he, like, knock out Roy Jones Jr.? <sighs> Who's younger? Did he? He is a and good, also a good fighter. That's the thing. He's a good fighter. So what, what's Mike Tyson going to do? He's just going to go out there and cash a check. Get what hit. is? What is? Uh, what's the last thing you saw Mike Paul Tyson Wayne? do? Um, he was in the Hangover. Hangover. Like a hundred years ago. Yeah. He got to do something. Um, if you told me in 2018 that both Paul brothers would be respected professional athletes, I don't think I would have believed yeah. you. No, sir. Good call. Absolutely not. That's a good point. Yeah, he's 27, so he's 30 years younger. Now, I assume Tyson's going to have, like, what would he have on him? Like 20 pounds on him? 25 pounds? I would think a lot, but... All right, well, so when is this fight's coming up? Yes. Is this, like, a I think couple a summer weeks? Thing. Summer no. thing? Oh, okay. okay. Does he have to beat Fanasi before he can fight Mike Tyson? <laughs> <laughs> the way they have it set up, it doesn't look like a podcast. No. It literally looks like they're going to be fighting. <laughs> yeah, each other. it's almost. They're nose to nose. Fanasi's versus Jake Paul. Somebody photoshopped it. Interview of the century. Yeah. Interview of the century, yes. I like that idea. Make it like New Age Punch Out for the NES where Jake Paul is the guy and he's got to like he's got to fight like Thanasis and then Don Flamenco and then uh, King Hippo yeah exactly (laughs) (laughs) and then take on Tyson at the end that was the most difficult guy Thanasis has got the height advantage he's I think a way taller than Jake Paul he's 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 6'7 yeah in, in the in the image it looks like he's towering over him can't wait. I can't wait. I, I, I heard recently that Mike Tyson kind of went a little uh, a little angry during an interview. So he's no, th- not Mike Tyson. Yeah. He's some, well, most of the time he's soft and gentle. But, you know, that, that angry Mike Tyson, that's the old mm-hmm. Mike Tyson. So, yeah, maybe there'll be an actual scrap. Whenever this happens on Netflix, <laughs> I do believe. <laughs> <laughs> Netflix, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah These right. guys, man. You're right. Oh, man, yeah. they're getting paid for this. But anyway, check out the podcast, I guess. What'd you say? Drops tomorrow. Yeah, it drops tomorrow. The nasties. Interview of the year. Okay. Uh, century, century. Interview of the century. <laughs> I'm mistaken. Wow. Let me take that that's back. That's bold. Yeah. It's only 2024. <laughs> There's another 76 years left of this century. Man, it ain't interview of the week. <laughs> I just talked to Rod Benson. I guarantee you it's better. Okay? Uh, but anyway, let's call it there. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, Survivor's on tonight. We'll have no buffs in the afternoon tomorrow. So two shows coming at you. No dunks and no buffs. Thanks for joining us live. Podcast listeners, do us a favor. Leave us a five-star rating and review. We really appreciate that. And otherwise, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy the games tonight. Till then, Clipper Bro. You heard it here first. Have a great time. Turn up. Love you guys. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. And remember, just saw this from Chuck Liddell. Old, old MMA fighter. 
on Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul, as soon as Tyson hits him, it's over. Yeah. Nice, Chuck Liddell. All I'm right. with you. I'm with you. It's all Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> we got to watch it now. Uh, yeah, for uh, sure. I'm definitely watching it. Face the day, people.